everybody, it's me, Lakeso5, and today I'm super excited to show you how we can make our own version of Arena Clash. I've been dying to work on this and I am so excited to show you how we're gonna do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up our menu. You can do that by pressing the recess button under your left controller and then hit the Create tab. And from the Create tab, we're gonna go ahead and click New World. And then under New Worlds, you have simple environments, rich environments, pre-made mechanics, scripting environments. Now please note there's PVP template and there's PVP Arena. This rich environment is amazing if you wanna do your own scripting, but does not have any pre-built mechanics or scripts. For that, you're gonna to wanna to use this one, the PVP template, which is under scripting environments. Let's go ahead and click create. We'll give it a name. Lakes is Capture the Flag Arena Clash. That's right, today we've got a lot of awesome topics to cover. We're gonna look at how billboarding was used, how pop-ups and per player visibility was used. We're also gonna look and see how we can add more players, modify the launchers. And now let's click create. Here we go. Here we are. And the first thing I recommend we do is open our menu, go to manage collaborators, and I'm gonna add a couple friends. We're gonna invite Keo Chan Tu as an editor, and we're also gonna invite Oculus410 as a tester as he is an avid Arena Clash player. As we've spawned in, you can see we've already got this gun attached to us. It's already functional. Fantastic, man. This thing already works. It's even got a little welcome and how to play is already here. We've even got the global highest level. Sweet. Look at all this stuff that's already built for us. Even a spectate button. We've got our ready zones left and right. Now it's up to us to make this the arena clash of our dreams. Let's go play around and see how it works. Welcome right. to the orange team. Here we go! I'm on the orange team, it's gonna have a 10 second countdown just like classic Arena Clash. We'll then be able to run around grabbing weapons and let's just see what it's like. I found a sniper, oh you can see there's multiple different weapon types. Oh snap! Got a headshot from all the way over here. As we run around you're gonna see there's lots of different weapon types like this grenade launcher. Look at that! And check out this crazy rocket launcher. Bye! Last shot! Oh, and I missed. And my HP's critical. <gasps> Taking cover. Oh no! <laughs> and she got me. Here we can see one of the pop-ups that's appeared to tell us that we've been KO'd and that we would be revived by a teammate's high five. And we'll be respawning two, one, and here we are, we're back. You can see the game time is a bit longer than Classic Arena Clash. It looks like it must be about five minutes because we have four minutes left on the counter. I really like this big old boy, so we're gonna try to head for- Bye, Kale! <laughs> <Target down. laughs> Revenge. <laughs> Look at that! I just leveled up! That's fabulous! And here, if we come back to the leaderboard, Hey everybody, so there seems to be some weird bug with the leaderboard. I've been looking through all the scripts to try and find a way to get it functioning, but I have an easy method to get it functioning for you, which I think is gonna be the better method. So what we're gonna do is head into our build mode, go down to gizmos, and under the gizmos, we're going to pull out a trigger gizmo and a script gizmo. And what this is gonna do is update the leaderboard. So we're gonna call this one this leaderboard update, and we're not gonna use WinWorld to start it, so we'll pull down to delete. And we're gonna come over here to our events. And if you're seeing a little bit of lag here, I do apologize. When you come to this world, it is very laggy in build mode. I don't know why. Um, hopefully it's just a bug and it's fixed by the time you're doing this. But I do apologize for the bug. I'll try to keep my head steady for you. So now we're gonna bring over when player enters world, when player exits world, and we're also going to bring in when trigger is entered by player. And in all three of these instances, we are going to update their leaderboard. And so to do that, we're gonna create a new event. So we're gonna bring over when event is received, and now we have four events. All four of these represent things that can happen. So when world is entered by a player, that's when somebody arrives. When world is exited by a player, that's when somebody leaves. When the trigger is entered by a player, we're gonna put the trigger in front of the leaderboard so when people walk up to it, it updates their stats. And then when my event is received, is an event that we're gonna cause to go off. And so we'll go ahead and keep it with my event because it's just a little bit easier. We're gonna grab send event to object and we're just gonna duplicate this by thumb sticking to the right into all three of these. And so whenever any of these three events happen, we cause the my event to go off. Now we can customize this and give it a custom name by hitting the drop down and clicking new event. But for now, I'm just gonna call it my event because it's really quite simple. And then over here on our values tab, we're gonna grab set world leaderboard score for player, drop that into my event. And what are we changing? We are changing the leaderboard level score. We're going to delete the zero. We are not going to worry about forcing it. 
and we do need to receive a player value. So see how we need this player value? To do that, we just drag this player pill down into the new parameter slot. And that means my event is received with a parameter. If you don't put a parameter in, the event will not be received. So we need to click new parameter, type in PLID. This stands for player ID. It's just an abbreviation. We'll then select player and click confirm. You can name that whatever you'd like. We can then drag that PLID pill down into the player pill. And now the value is going to be get player persistent variable. This is going to grab their persistent variable, which we know is, I think, level. There's 65 of these, which is crazy. Um, <laughs> you're gonna go ahead and then find level. And now we just need to drag the player ID pill into the other side. And now we'll be able to update the leaderboard. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. I'm gonna move this right over here next to the leaderboard so it's kept relatively close. We're gonna bring our trigger in and put it right about there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch it nice right to there so it just fills this whole space up. We're gonna open up the properties panel of the trigger and then we just need to attach that leaderboard update script. Now there's a lot of scripts in this world, but if we scroll to the bottom, that's where the most recent script is. So we can then select that. And now we've attached that script and the trigger should work. Go ahead and resume playing the world by hitting the play button. There it is, my score has been added. So we do know that this is working. And now Oculus and I are gonna go play around and see if he gets added to the leaderboard. All right, the game's ended. His score has been tallied up. There it is. Yeah, it's so laggy. Yeah, but look at that. We got Oculus on there. So this method does work. It's probably the best method. So this is a pretty fun map, I think. But you know what? I really love the aesthetic of the old Arena Clash. And in fact, they actually give it to us. So if you open your menu right now and head to Create tab, and then under New World, you're gonna see Rich Environments PvP Arena. And this is actually the Arena Clash Arena. And so Ko actually ran out and she is making that arena, moving up into the sky. And then we're going to import it in here so we can use the original Arena Clash pieces to build our Arena Clash world. So very excited about that. And uh, look at, Ko's actually just gotten back. And I'm also gonna upgrade Oculus. Right now, he's just a tester. Now, unfortunately, I have to remove him to upgrade him, but I'm going to remove him as a tester. There we go. And now we're going to invite him as an editor. And now he'll be able to help us build this awesome world. All right. So one of the first things we want to do is move all of these guns up and out of the way. So that way we can place them down later. Because the world is running, it's kind of glitchy. So we would definitely want to stop the world. everyone it is a new day and i am back i'm super excited this map has come together quite nicely i do need to let you know that the previous recording uh was done on a quest 2 and i'm still on a quest 2 but i'm using uh desktop the link the link cable and that's giving me this buttery smooth um feeling here so it's not as laggy because the lag after a couple hours i'd felt pretty um i had a headache it wasn't it was very uncomfortable so what we did discover is if you stop the world so from your build menu on the script panel you can oh we should do that stop the world we can then go ahead and hit clear uh and then the this area here is the most laggy and there were a lot of menus open so if you like press forward on your thumbstick, it opens the menu, and then you can close them by pressing forward again, or by pressing the X in the top right. And so if you close all the menus, that will pretty much reduce the lag uh, when the world is stopped, especially in the gameplay area. But when you start looking at all of this, that's when it becomes a problem. So definitely, um, I'm thinking even just moving this stuff around. So if you selected these individual components, each one of these represents a player. So you'd take one of these, maybe move it further away. That's what I think is causing it, is just having all of these per player items grouped together so closely is causing a lot of lag. But I am not sure. Um, so definitely, you know, play around with it, see what you can do. To kick today off, I wanna encourage you to consider customizing this. These colors are very arena clash and that's fine, but you could make these you know, your own custom colors. You could paint the ground different. You could customize the trees, 
Now with that said, it's important to note that one of our goals is to make this an eight player world. And if we open up our menu and head to the worlds tab, head to capacity, you'll see we're still over on object capacity, but we got all these extra objects up here. So I'm not worried about that. Our simulation and animation is pretty close to 91%. Under player settings, you can see it's set to six. We should slide that up to eight, which is gonna be problematic because as you see, we're now over on our simulation and animation. So we're gonna have to think that through and we haven't even duplicated the stuff required to make it an eight player world. So definitely need to think about that. While we're in here, let's actually go ahead and slide this up to eight players. This is gonna say that you recommend eight players in the world and I do, so that makes sense. You'll also notice that on the main page here, the photo is wrong. So you're gonna to wanna to swap that photo out later. Uh, visible to public is good. Beta world, eh, this is kind of a beta at this point. So maybe it would be worth checking. Comfort rating is gonna be moderate because this is a pretty intense game. It's not intense, intense, but it is moderately intense. And this is an action player versus player. Very nice. And then we can add a description later. So we'll come back to that some more at the end of this. A little deleting later and you can see we are well under our object capacity. Our simulation and animation is something to be desired. So we'll have to continue looking at that. You can see 20% is from visual effects. Um, these uh, orange cubes, these are visual effects and they're very, very costly. So I'm wondering if there's something that we can just visually see that's not really necessary. I think these ones over here, I mean, look at it per player. This is very expensive. All right, unfortunately, this pool manager doesn't function the way that I was hoping it would. And while theoretically you could have a pool of visual effects in the way that I described, the reason it's not being done here is because each of these visual effects is owned by a player, which means it's more responsive because it's locally scripted. You just get a much better look and feel. So unfortunately we do need to leave these. So then in that case, the only option we would have would be to say we don't want one of these. And so there's like the hit spark is probably the one that we can get rid of. When you open these up, you'll see there's a hit spark here, there's a hit ring here and another hit spark here. Notice these little cable ties and these descriptions can give us a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. So we've got the headshot hit effects, one just for headshots. Um, and let's see if we can figure out which one that's going to. You can use these cables to see exactly which one these go to. And so we can see this hit FX and this E and V hit FX are both the sparks. And I just, I don't think sparks are as noticeable. They're very cool. And if you want to make this a six player world, for sure. But since we need to go to eight players, I think it's going to be better to be safe than sorry. And we're going to delete all of our hit sparks. I just don't think they're absolutely necessary for the gameplay. And so we can go ahead and close all of the hit ring and then we can see that the top and the bottom are our hit sparks so i'll go ahead and close that one here close that one there and select go ahead and pull down to delete and then you'll remember that this was in the player effects manager so if we open up the properties panel for this here probably worthwhile to come into the variables and be very careful here there's sound effects and visual effects we want to delete the e and v hit vfx and the hit vfx down here and when we delete those you'll see that on this side we get some errors and this is important that we remove errors so we're deleting this one we're deleting this one and then Basically, this is removing all the potential bugs. Okay, so this one here at the bottom is a little bit complex because it's sending hit VFX with these three parameters. And if it doesn't receive with three parameters, it will have an issue. I believe what we're gonna wanna do is just use self to replace these. So if we grab this self pill, we can duplicate by thumb sticking to the right. So the hit VFX is the one that we deleted and the E and V hit VFX. And now when it tries to play on self, cause it's just a generic object, it's just not gonna be able to play the visual effects. And so this should solve our issues. Any possibles, if we find some other bugs, we'll be sure to correct them. But there we go, we can close that now. Looking back here at our capacity meter, you can see we've actually ended up deleting 9% of our visual effects, which is incredible. There's still 50% dynamics. And so that's just all the weapons and all the things that are around the world. So lots of dynamic objects in this world, which makes sense because it's a very dynamic world. And so the next thing we wanna do is add two more players. And so to do that, we're going to select this cube, this cube, these, basically this entire line right here and this extra gun and fingers crossed this is enough stuff and we've selected everything um, then we also need to select over here we have a player name this is gonna be really difficult to select okay got that one oh that was it cool and then down here we've got another one 
So we're gonna go ahead and select all of this and that menu there. Okay, so we select that player. All right, and this down here. So then we need to select this one and select all of this. There's a lot here to select per player. So this might not, we might not have deleted enough. We'll have to see. I'm a little nervous. Okay. We've got that. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab our duplicate tool. Just double checking that we've deleted enough and then slide to the right. Okay. There we go. And once you get to the right distance, I think about there's good. We can then hit the array tool one time. And that there has loaded up a uh, second player for us. So now we have eight players. Definitely gonna need some testing to see if we've caught inadvertently caused some bugs here. And unfortunately you can only test eight players by publishing the world. But if we look at our capacity meter, look at that. We have probably half a percent left. <laughs> so great job to us. We've uh, managed to keep our capacity under 100% and we now support eight players. I'm very, very whew, shocked, but excited, ecstatic to give this a try. So there we have our eight player lineup. We will make this look prettier later. Just not worried about it right now. So like you could move these around. It doesn't have to necessarily be like in this exact position. It's okay. It's just not ideal. Like as a really simple way to make this look better, you could simply just slide it over. So we select all of these objects. And then because I want these to move out of the way as well, I'm gonna select those as well. And then we can eyeball this turning snapping off. And then once we get that roughly in the center, like that's a little bit better. If you're going for the eight players, that's definitely a little bit better. The next thing I really wanted to show you is up here. You notice all of these per player objects, they're kind of funky, right? Like look at that. And so what we're seeing happen here is I'm gonna open up the properties panel for this one. This is one of the newer ones we created. We can then zoom in by clicking this button right here. So we'll go ahead and click zoom in. And then when we click on this piece right here and open the properties panel for this, you're gonna note that it is animated. And this is quite interesting, right? So I'm not gonna lie, if you don't care about player names, this might be worth deleting because it could save quite a bit of capacity. But because it's, uh, that's because it's animated. Animations cost, I think, if we deleted all of this, it would save us 1% um, animation capacity if we deleted every single one of these. Uh, but it's not that expensive, so don't need to worry too much. It's cl not collidable, so it shouldn't be um, lagging your game or anything. And then if you go to attributes, you'll notice it has billboard set to lock Y, and that's what's causing it to rotate, so it always faces the player. So that's how you get that, look, at they're all in lined up, and then they start to overlap. So very cool, but that's how it's done. Basically you have to set it to be animated and then you also have to set it to be lock Y. Oh, okay, so super interesting note. I did this in one of my worlds once and uh, this should work. If we go to behavior tab and turn it from animated to none, we will save capacity and it should still function perfectly, yeah. And the reason that is is because text can be animated but objects cannot because there's no object in here. Like there's there's no visible object right here. I think there is, like if we zoom into this grouping, there is an object to um, make it a grouping, but we could actually delete this object just leaving the text bit there. And so now you can see it's just a piece of text and now we can zoom out. The thing is you can't add billboarding to just text, so it has to be grouped like this but it doesn't have to be animated because text will rotate using billboarding without it being animated. So this is awesome. And so what's really cool about this is now we're gonna go do that eight times and that's gonna save us about 1% capacity, which is really nice. Not to mention, I think like eight objects. So if you're building a really uh, visually intense version of Arena Clash, saving eight objects could really be uh, necessary. So I understand that. We'll go ahead and zoom out by double clicking with our index trigger. There's also a zoom out button where you click zoom in. And now that we've um, got this one, I wanna just lock it. So that way I can't accidentally touch that one. And then we'll continue going through to each of these. So we'll go to the next one and then we'll zoom in and just repeat this process until you've reached the end. Woo! With all that done, we can check our capacity meter. We've saved a whole 1%, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're you know playing with the last half percent, that is enormous. So congratulations if you've managed to do that. You do need to be very, very careful as you go through so you don't accidentally uh, mess it up. But look at that, we've done it. 
If we come on over here to these uh, little player icons, you're gonna notice there's these little red screens. And these are very interesting because I don't think you see them when playing. Um, I think we can verify that in a minute, but when you get KO'd, they put this red screen in front of you, which has a little bit of opacity so you can see through it, but the whole world goes red. So it's like, oh, you've been KO'd. And that's really cool. But because it's on a per player visibility, that means only the player that this like is set to can see it, which is really quite neat. And so if you aren't familiar with per object visibility, it's a relatively new code block that you can find under your gizmos, pull out your script gizmo. Okay, so I do not know what just happened, but our simulation animation capacity just jumped to 104%. Oh, I hit stop, reset, play world. Yeah, I reset and played the world. So there must be some object that ended up being turned to animated via script. Huh, that's interesting. I wonder if it's what we were just working on up. No, that wouldn't be it. There must be some object. What in the world could it possibly be? That starts as not animated and is then set to animated. Yikes. Um, well, we had done it, you guys. Well, that's, that's, that sucks. I don't, I don't actually know how to fix that. Um, Cause I don't know if it's a bug or not. So I guess this comes down to, we need to find some more ways to optimize. Well, I didn't really want to get rid of the hit rings, so we're not going to get rid of that. Um, and they're not very expensive. Hit rings are pretty much free. There's lots of visual effects around the world for each of the weapons. Those we should probably keep. All right, so not gonna lie, this this just sucks a lot. I mean, there really isn't any great way to put this. Um, but you know, being a 4% over, it's nearly impossible to optimize 4% without deleting massive amounts of things or big things. Um, so for instance, if you knew you didn't want the rocket launcher, you could delete it. Now, I do really like the rocket launcher. So if we open up the properties panel and we take a look at it, you can see in here, there's some properties that we can adjust. For instance, we can adjust the projectile speed, which is pretty useful. Um, respawn time, reserve ammo. So like how much ammo is there? The fire rate, <laughs> which is zero because of this is a special one. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know, I really like the rocket launcher. I do think it is a little OP. So what I'm gonna do is take the speed and set it to be even slower. So we're gonna go down to like 20 and that should make it even easier to dodge. But uh, you know, if you're up close, <laughs> not much you can do. But that that's a pretty, pretty awesome one. Now, even here on our uh, grenade, this might be the one that we actually wanna get rid of. So if you look at the grenade, um, I love grenades. I just don't think they get used enough. They're not super useful. The grenade launching gun is amazing. Um, in here we have, let's see, max lifetime. So how long is it around? Damage. So how much damage is it causing? So I assume 100 is just like instant kill, explosion radius. This is some really cool stuff, honestly. Like definitely encourage you to play around with these numbers, see what happens. You can probably make some really unique stuff, but I think for our purposes to get this to eight players, which is kind of our goal today, we're going to need to delete a couple grenades. So anytime I can find a grenade, I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. And I'm going to remove this platform that it was sitting on as well. Now, in this case, I'm leaving the platform so you can like jump up to the second floor. And if you look at our meter, we're at 101% from three grenades deleted. And that doesn't surprise me because you can see there's this trail effects, which is about 1% uh, simulation animation capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. And since we no longer have this, that deletes this one and the explosion visual effects, which I assume is being used by all of them. And the script can be deleted as well. And now say bye-bye and we should be 1% under now. And now we've done it. It's now an eight player world. We've got it exactly 100% capacity. So let's keep that going. The last thing we were talking about was these red screens and how they're only visible to one player at a time. And I was trying to show you how we can see that in the script block. So back on our build menu, under gizmos, we can go ahead and pull out a script. And then inside the script, if we head down to our actions page. You'll see that there is set who is allowed to view object as well as reset who is allowed to view object. And so the, each of these red panes is probably set to be viewed and then reset when it no longer needs to be done. So you can imagine when player is KO'd, set who is allowed to view self to true, when player is no longer KO'd, reset who is allowed to view self, and now all of a sudden nobody can see it. And so, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think it's a great code block. I encourage you to try messing around with it, see what you can do. 
there is a lot of possibilities there. You can even imagine like an art gallery that you have to wear special glasses to see like another layer to the art. Very cool code block. I really like snipers and I love getting headshots and people getting KO'd in one hit, but it's kind of OP, right? Like let's go ahead and zoom into this sniper. So you hit the zoom in button on the properties panel. And then up here we have the Raycast. And I believe we should have a projectile launcher in here somewhere. Oh yeah, there's a projectile launcher. <laughs> the arrow's totally messing me up. We'll go ahead and zoom out now that we've opened the properties panel for both of these. And then we just wanna take a look at what these are being used for. And so here we can see that this is not running a script, so we don't really need the Raycast. We can go ahead and close that. But over here on the projectile launcher, you'll notice that it is running the Gizmo projectile. And on here we can see the explosion radius is explosion, it's not. Um, so I guess you could turn this into an explosion, which would be interesting. Uh, headshot damage data. So here you can see that if you hit the torso, it's 30. If you hit the headshot, it's 40. And so let's go ahead and just change these down to 25 and 30. So, you know, just maybe even 20. So it's really gonna require a little bit more with the sniper. But you know what? I think that's gonna make the gameplay a lot more fun. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the last thing we're gonna do is on the properties panel of the sniper, we can see that we have some options in here for current ammo and max ammo. Let's just go ahead and double this up to four and four is gonna make it a little bit more fair since now the sniper is not as OP, but it was kind of hard, right? Like, so if you need to learn how to use the sniper, now you can get a couple shots off, people get a little bit more notice that you're firing at them. I think it's really cool. So definitely less OP sniper. Now, unfortunately, because we've done this, the other sniper on the other side of the world does not have the same properties. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this one here and then slide on over here to where we have the other sniper hiding. And we'll go ahead and set that there, delete this one. Very cool, and that's how you can customize some of these weapons. So I encourage you, you know, zoom in, adjust properties on the projectile launcher itself. Feel free to adjust properties on the weapon itself. And uh, yeah, keep playing with these, have some fun, make sure to customize this world. And with that, we've made our own customized arena clash. I think we need to do some testing in this world and just make sure that this place works. To do that testing, we're gonna go ahead into our world tab. We're gonna set it to be a beta world that is visible to the public. We should create our own thumbnail image. So let's go into the world real quick. I'm gonna stand on this little platform here. Now that I got my camera out, we'll swap this around and we can take a cool photo of the world. So Kao, do you wanna make yourself bigger so we can have a little player face in the world? All right, we've got our photo, very nice. We're gonna go ahead and open that up so we can review it real quick. Very nice photo, that is hysterical. We can even post it to the world page, which is something I like to do with any photo I take in the world for a world photo. And now we'll head into build mode. And when we open up that build menu, we can hit update, select the photo, hit back. And sometimes it doesn't update. Oh, but that time it did, so that's fabulous. Very, very nice. We've got this listed as a beta world and we are, gonna remove the capture the flag tag from the world name. And that way we can add that in later once we've added the mechanic. But first we just need to make sure that this place works. And before I hit the publish, Kaylin, let's go in the, to play mode and actually play one round of this. Make sure there's no really game breaking bugs before we try to get eight players in. Okay, so if you go into um, play mode and you've got like some flickering, some overlapping, what we had to do was go into play mode, build mode, play mode, build mode, because these are locally scripted. What can happen is you need to, when you select an object that's locally scripted, you become the owner, which causes the win world to start an event to go off. It then thinks you're the owner. And so it assigns you multiple of them. So if you go into play mode, back into build mode, into play mode, back in build mode, until it's cycled through the entire list of items, it will then have um, fixed it. So we just did that about eight or nine times and it, um, it solved the flickering bug where we had basically two of these overlapping. I'm being very careful not to accidentally touch it because I don't want it to get stuck on me again. And as we started the game, I remember there was actually a couple other things I really wanted to do as like a little bonus. I'd like to customize the gameplay time. 
To customize the game time, if we open up the round manager, that's this cube right here above the sign, you'll see that we have some options here for like how long does it take if the round ends early, so it's five seconds, round start delay is 10 seconds, the countdown's 10 seconds, and if we continue looking through here, we can see the round timer is set to 300, which is five minutes. So I'd like to make this relatively fast so we can do more testing. So we're gonna set to two minutes, 120 seconds. Very nice. And the other time thing that I'm really not a fan of is how long it takes to respawn once you've been knocked out. And so we're gonna try and fix that as well. Let's see. Ooh, that's a good catch. Okay, so I count, found the player ready manager here, this little cube, and it says max players per team is three. We're actually gonna set this to be, this is gonna sound crazy. We're gonna set this to be seven. And so what this means is you could have a one on seven match, which sounds ridiculous, but it's going to be awesome if that's what you're into. You could set it to four if you want it to be max four RV four and you have to like actually get on teams. But I just think that it could be a really fun game mode. And so let's see what else we've got. Ah, we found it. So here under the player manager, you can see respawn time is set to 15, which I think is ridiculous. We're going to set it to seven. So that cuts it in half. It's going to make it a little bit too, you know, challenging to high five players, but you don't feel like you're just wasting the entire two minute game. I mean, 15 seconds would be what an eighth of the game just sitting there. Um, so even with that in mind, I think maybe a timer that's actually shorter, more like three seconds might be better. So let's go to four seconds and uh, we'll see how that is. I just really want this game to be fast action-packed and uh, you know a lot of fun for everyone even if you aren't great at playing the punishment isn't nearly as intense so with all those changes made okay are you ready to go play another round love the coloring you've done out there that looks really nice all right I'm on the blue team got my weapon let's go KO that's her name by the way I'm not just saying I'm gonna knock her out her name's actually KO <laughs> Together All right, we're in. We've only got two minutes. Team. Last time she popped in that window. Let's see, there she is. Oh no, I'm out! Wait, no, the timer was still 15 seconds. All right, let's try the slow down version of that. Doesn't feel super slow. Okay. Target down. It isn't is as tied. super slow, but yeah, it works. If I shoot you in the head, look at she didn't die when I shot her in the head. Very nice. Let's try one in the chest. And that's a KO. All right, so there's some bugs. We'll go ahead and hit stop. So whatever that 15 seconds was, was not what I thought, because it didn't do anything. I set it to four. So whatever this respawn time is should probably be set back to 15. I don't actually know, but you know, that's fine. Um, the other thing, we are still trying to figure out how to fix that. But the other thing was the sniper. While it didn't cause headshots to go off, it was still like two shots was the kill. So I'm gonna go change this back so you only get two ammo. Um, so you, two ammo max and two current ammo because I do like that it doesn't kill. It hasn't been nearly as nerfed as I thought. So let's go ahead and change this one back as well. All right, let's try opening up this player script and see what this has to do. Hmm, okay, so I think this might be it. So if we go to the variables tab of the player script, there is default gravity, nice. Current HP, initial HP. Oh, you know, I'd love to increase that to like 50. Give us another, you know, 25% more health. Um, death, there it is, death time. Let's change this down to four seconds. Fantastic. Okay, very excited to have that. HP regen time, this should be five seconds. Well, I mean, this is a really fast paced version of arena class, a little bit more intense than some of the other ones I've seen. And so if we see this player script, I don't know where this is being attached to. So I don't see like a manager right next to this. So I assume there's one running on each player and hopefully it's just running the default. So if we open, nope, that's the death spawn point. Ah, I found it, okay. So here's the player script. So if you look down here, this one in the center is the player script. And if we come down to here, we can see initial HP did update and death time did update as well. Um, this is important because there are individual ones for each of these. You could say half the players randomly get different stats. That's not ideal though. We want this to be the same. And so you can see that if we update it on this player script, on the variables tab, that is the way to apply it to all of the players. Fantastic. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit publish back on the world tab. We'll just hit the publish now and it's time for us to go test this out. 
I agree. All right, we're gonna go back into play mode, open up our menu, and we can visit the published world page, launch an open session, and invite some friends. Hey y'all, welcome, welcome. We're just doing some testing right now. So far, nothing's broken, which is good. Uh, <laughs> the real welcome trick here to is to see if we can do eight players. Welcome. Yeah, oh, and we can do seven on one. That's a thing too. Well, two games in, things are going really well. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the way we've set it up, but we had an issue where if you joined this team, you couldn't join. And I think it's because, let's see, there's definitely several places this could be set, which is a bit problematic, but up here on our team manager script at the top, on the variables tab, we can see max players is set to three, and we actually need to set this to seven. So we want the max players on a team to be seven, and let's see if there's anything else we need to change. So I think that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and give that a go and see how it works. And we'll just go ahead and hit the publish and it'll update. You'll notice the time changes. So once that time updates there, there we go. Let's go ahead and open this world and invite our friends. I think we've got eight, yeah. Cause we got four on four now. Let's do it. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I What's wrong with the score on the blue team? Yeah, I don't know. That's the bug I'm gonna have to solve. Let's try uh, seven on yeah. one. Seven on one. <laughs> Good luck to me. <laughs> this is gonna be brutal. No, no, I didn't even make it anywhere. <laughs> Well, at least we know it's possible. Might not be the best game mode, but it is possible. All right, good game. Well done. Sweet, thank you guys for uh, testing that with me. Okay, so while I was playing that, I noticed that this one, for some reason, this text was box was slid over. So this needs to actually go right about there. So there we go, solved that little bug there. The other thing that we're having is this isn't displaying, like I expected one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I mean, six would still be great, um, but for some reason it's only going to three on this side and it only went to four on this side. Oh, there's even menus open here. Well, that could be part of the lag we were experiencing. Yeah, so these do appear to be referenced to something. Let's go see if there's any more open, nope. But for some reason, this one on this side, this is referencing right to here. Okay, so this is our reference. You can see all of the displays are linked in here, P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and they're all set up, so why aren't we seeing that displaying correctly? Um, we can see that there's one for each side, team score zero, doesn't seem to have a limit on it, and the fact that there is six of them seems to suggest that it can go, oh, player count six. Um, we should change that to, well, hmm, because there's six of them, that must be what, let's read the script here. Team stats display. Okay, so I suspect by changing this to say uh, the number of players that we can support, which is eight, it will now allow the board to update correctly. I'm not sure though. So I'm not exactly positive this fixes it, but it's not a game breaking bug. So I'm not extremely concerned with it. What I do think is interesting is that there are so many text objects here. Like if you are doing a 3v3, you know, the traditional arena clash, you only need the first three of these. So while I'm not gonna get into optimizing this like too heavily today, theoretically you could delete these. There might be a script bug that needs to be fixed, but does seem like it could support that, which is quite interesting. So very cool. The other bug was on the player one over here. So under player, we had set the respond time to four seconds and I loved the respond time being four seconds, but it actually ended up being closer to three seconds, which I just thought was a little too fast. So I'm gonna change this up to six. So that should make it Still fast paced, but not ridiculously fast paced. Well, there you have it. That is how we can customize our own Arena Clash worlds. Now we were gonna talk about capture the flag, but as KO was pointing out to me, our capacity is at 100%, so we aren't able to add two additional grabbable objects or potentially some other things. There's definitely ways we could optimize this and make it work. But what I'd like to instead do is show you how you could theoretically make it. And at least then you'll know how you could make this into capture the flag. Say you wanted to do a six player map, not an eight player map. And with that in mind, what you need to know how to do. Okay, so following that trail led me to a dead end. So here I wanted to say, okay, when display is received with score and is winning, then set display score to score. 
There we go. So this is get coming from somewhere, right? So perhaps we can track it the other way, which is this object here is running score display, right? And we can see that it has one reference cable. And if we follow that reference cable, I feel like we're playing a crazy game here. Ah, there it is. Okay, so this is the guy that's sending the score to that board. And so here we have the orange team, which is running team manager. And so right here on the team manager, this must be where points are getting recorded. Ah, there it is, add points, we finally found it. So here is when add points is received with a number. And so all that means is on each of these team manager scripts, when you send add points with a number, it's going to increase the points and cause everything else to happen. And so all you need to do is send the event add points to this guy here for the orange team to get points and send add points to the blue team here for blue team to get points. And so I apologize, we're not gonna go super in deep here, but what you might imagine is say this pedestal is where the flag needs to go. You could even put some sort of marker there so it's obvious. There would be a trigger around it that is detecting flags. So if we pulled out a say trigger gizmo, so here on this trigger gizmo, you can see you can set objects tagged and then type in a tag like flag. And then this trigger will fire the when object enters trigger event when an object tagged flag enters. You could then create an object and I'll just duplicate this one because it doesn't really matter what it looks like, but say this was a flag. And if it was a flag grouping on the attributes tab, you could set it to be tagged flag. So you can type in the tag. And as long as the tag matches capital for capital, it'll work. And then you wanna make sure it's set to interactive and grabbable. And then the player would be able to pick this up, run it across the map. And when they put it in there, you could have 10 points be added. And then I'd also say when that happens, cause the flag to get respawned back to this side. And so I remember there was an arena clash map where they actually had a football that was spawning in the center of the map. And when you got it to your side, it did the exact same thing. And then uh, you could also, it would respawn back and you'd have to play again. And so that's how you do capture the flag. And I think we've done it. This has been a long one. So thank you guys so much for joining and pressing through here. Hopefully this helps you build your own Arena Clash worlds. Feel free to check out my version, Lakes' is Arena Clash in Horizon. It is functional and running right now. I'm gonna go hit that last update in. So world and publish. Awesome, like that, we will see you in Horizon. Bye.